Uh, okay, this is Terry. I'm calling the meeting to order. And Jillian, are you there? Here. Tony? Yes, I'm here. And of course I'm here. Okay. Now we need approval of the December third meeting. So I'll make a motion. Approve the minutes. The motion. Okay, I'll I'll stick at that motion. Okay, are you there, Jillian? I'm here. Okay. Uh, so, do you want to kind of change the agenda around? That's just fine. That's fine with me. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll give the other commissioners a few minutes, and uh, we'll let Chandler fill us in on number seven, the landfill building project. Heather, will you tell, will you remind, Ch I can't remember, is it, what is it you hit to unmute when you're on the phone? The star six? It's star six, seven or star six, six, I think is what I had to do. Okay, he's, he's got you guys hear me? I can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. My phone keeps muting itself on its phone without me touching anything. But anyway, um, we got two bids in this week, well, last week actually, and, uh, Dwayne Ball, which was with Billy Ball Construction, they was the low bid. He's already prepared his contract, and we're going to look over that and hopefully get it signed this week. And as quick as we can get everything together, we'll start construction. Okay. Okay. And while we got you on there, why don't you just discuss uh, any issues that we got at the landfill and convenience? convenience centers that you want to bring their attention? Well, everything's pretty much right now running like it normally does. Um, you know, it's, right now it's a, it's a wet time of the year at the landfill. It's pretty muddy. There's not a lot of actual stuff we can do in the landfill because it's too muddy. And that's the reason we had to get everything else in line. So when the time of the year times that we can start doing work on our landfill, it'll be dry and we can, we can jump right on that. So, uh, but um, on the other, other, Issues or have have had a few people that's had COVID. I've had a you know stretch people pretty thin and work some people overtime that I normally I normally wouldn't do, but I had no option. But uh, hopefully everybody can get through this virus and we can get everything back on track. <coughs> Actually, I've had about okay. three people that's been sick. Okay, and then. Uh... While we got you on here, we'll let uh, the board just, and you is he, are you having how do you feel about continuing with the uh, roll off pans for the furniture pickup? Do you still want to consider that plan and go that action? That's for as, far as, as far as I'm concerned, I, I think it's probably still a good idea because this virus is still going pretty strong, and I don't want my guys handling that stuff and it right all over their clothes and turning it home to their family. I agree. I'll make a motion to continue at phase one for furniture pickup. Okay, we have a motion to continue. Planning, do we have a second? I'll second that. And of course, we all agree. So we'll continue with the roll off pans for the furniture pickup. Okay. Uh, Is anything got you? Um, I've seen and I've had people talk to me about the new open top containers that are outside the landfill. Can you fill us in on what those will be used for? Oh, the, the, ones that, that, the ones that's at the landfill, like the six yard containers? Are they green? Yeah, the ones that are stacked up outside the fence. Yes. Okay. We're 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 putting new. We're putting those at the schoolhouses, so they'll all have new containers. And then we're going to replace any bad ones. 
in their locations we needed to be replaced because we was really short on six yard containers what they had got bad on us over the years and uh we we was very limited on numbers and that so we we got some bought i'm going to get the schools their new ones out first and then when we have leftover ones we'll replace the bad ones where needed Thank you. Okay. Yep. Jillian, you or Tony either, or anybody, you has got any other questions you want while you got Chandler there? No, I'm good for for now. This is kind of a little bit awkward, but I'm doing the best I can. I, uh, okay. So there's nothing else that you got at this point. You just want to move on to the, uh, we have this number five, the Green Life proposal review anybody can join this in on this and whatever you want to say hey terry it's steve cobb i wanted to uh point out what april sent out in the attachment um this actually includes all 12 centers uh it's not the alternate proposal where y'all have come back to us and asked us to to not include city center and hours cut so what was attached on the on her email is uh that's the overall proposal for all 12 centers Okay, for anybody present in the maiden, Steve is on our bit. I'm sorry, Terry. Anybody got any questions for Steve while he's on here? CLB members, a mayor, anybody? This is Patrick. Um, I've got a quick. When does your all's contract expire? Does anybody know? I don't know an exact date. Uh, it's like about a year, a little over a year. Okay. I just, I just was curious why you were so far out in front of it to to renew it. That's. That's that's all I was curious. Thanks. That's My phone right. might be that that has to do with how we're about to open up this new landfill and we're trying to make sure that what we're doing in the future lines up with that landfill um, plan. Uh, your a demolition landfill. Yes. Okay. I joined a little late. Uh, Patrick, who are you with? Quality Waste. I used to I used to own Tidy Waste. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, well we got uh, while we got Steve Nim on there, any commissioners, the mayor, or anybody got any questions? I do have a I do have something I'd like to discuss with you. Representing Bill. Bill and Associates. Who's here representing Bill and Associates? Jeff Bishop is on the call with me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I put a gap right there, the audio. This is Mark Cathy with McGill Associates. Okay, Mark. Uh, my name is Forrest Clevenger. I'm with the County Commission, 6th District Commissioner. And I've been following this for some time. Mm -hmm. um, what all services do you really provide for the county? I mean, if I'm, just give me up to speed on some of this. I know some, there's some I'm not sure about. Uh, do we uh, contract with you all to come in and do the engineering for the existing landfill we had to tell us it was on grade to tell us where we're at with our, with our feeling uh, if i'm not mistaken we were contracting with you all to oversee that wouldn't we yes that's correct that's basically okay. annual i'm sorry annual services 
is uh, we, through uh, a subconsultant of ours, Billy Davis, we, have, we monitor your groundwater and report to the state. And we also provide uh, annual topographic surveys and give you insight as to where you need to be relative okay. to elevation. That's what I was doing. You and you were doing this back in 2016, 17, and 18 also, right? Uh, yes, correct. Our Knoxville office is doing that. This is my issue here. I have what the mayor gave us about a year and a half ago that your office provided us, and she provided a copy of her timeline. I have it here. I can get any one copies if you want. Mm -hmm. Back in 2016, July of 2016, TDAC issued a letter to you all and to the mayor requesting that the geological studies be redone because they were deficient. Okay. Okay. Are you familiar with this? I am not, because I will okay. on this project in so, 2018. Yeah, I'll, I'll catch you up to speed on this. Then. Okay. Two years goes by, and those hydrogeologic studies were never resubmitted to the state. That's why it's taken us five years to get this project done. Okay. Okay. Also, in 2018, when TDAC came in, they told us that we were overfilled in our landfill and we had to tire it down, which you just told me we were paying for that service for you all to tell us if our grade was right, if our groundwater is right, we paid for that service. But yet we were overfilled and the grade was wrong and we have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to correct that problem. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are spending twenty-five to thirty-five thousand per month, and we have for two years because those hydrogeologic studies were passed off to a third party according to your timeline, and you all assumed they were done. Yet it never got revisited or checked within two years, and that throwed us off this far at least at least two years in getting our class four per, uh, landfill permit. I've got the letters from TDAC. I've got the fax mail from TMAC or TDAC. All the email correspondence to you all and to the mayor. I have copies of all those. I've talked to every TDAC, or TDAC official from Knoxville to Nashville. I know what's, I mean, I, I know the timeline. Okay. okay. We are, we have spent an untold amount of money because you all dropped the ball and that's according to our mayor because she didn't want to take responsibility for it she put it solely on you and i've got the timeline to prove it. that's the problem i have right now personally if it was me we wouldn't be having this conversation because you would no longer be employed by the county i can't understand why we're still paying you money okay and you know the gentleman that was handling this is the best of my knowledge. He's no longer with your company. That's been correct. fired or relieved of duty, or he may have found a better job. I don't know. But this is this is something that came to light to me over two years ago. And I'm furious. Furious that we're still handing you all money after it's cost us over a million dollars to the best of my guess. Because you handed a all we had to do was resubmit a study in 2016, and it took two damn years. So I may be out of line with this, and there may be a valid explanation, but I have yet to hear it. That is fair. My whole, my whole thing is we've got you all wanting to do this. I think. COB needs to sit down and revisit whatever contract we've got with you all. We need to find a third party to go ahead and do this. I've actually reached out to a fellow who's qualified to do this, and he may be some assistance. His name is Randy Correll. He designed the landfill in Marstown. He's been in this business for a long time. And I think the board needs to hear from Mr. Correll and see what he may have to offer. Okay, well, here, let, let me, let me, all, this is what I can offer right now. And the questions you're asking are fair, Mr. Clevenger. That's, and so, but let me at least explain and then, and then you can, you can give me something further. 
Um, I was in, I, st I got involved in this uh, in 2019, met with Crystal Chandler and the state at the site. And I did take this project um, from uh, the, our Knoxville office and me and Jeff Bishop, and we redesigned it to manage the stormwater at this site. And we, we then resubmitted that we submitted that uh, to TDEC, and uh, for what it's worth, um, we submitted that to TDEC and met with them, met with TDEC, and then I, I spoke with uh, Lou Haynes and Abe Almasi with uh, TDEC, and they had two verbal comments to our resubmittal, and they said that was one of the best five submittals that, that we've ever reviewed, and we appreciate you getting that taken care of. Now, I, honestly, what happened before that, I cannot speak to every specific point of that. I, I can offer that I'll be glad to come meet with you and we can go through all of that so that you have a clear understanding. That's all I can offer specifically to you. What I can tell you, and I can, I'll be glad to speak to the proposal that I have sent and uh, what we're proposing at this time and we do have a project that you can move forward with on your class three landfill. And the state is happy with all components of that. And since uh, receiving the permit on December 3rd, we have met with them virtually, of course. And we've talked about what's required for the CQA, what's the minimum requirements. We've talked to them about whatever the county does that they either need to these do something with class three waste and yes, you have some waste on site that needs to be managed. And so the phase one expansion would be the logical next step. Uh, what we don't know is what your current financial situation is, hence the proposal that we gave you to look at all of those costs and what we've done for many people in the past and give you the data you need to make the decision on whether to move forward with phase one or to consider a transfer station or something. So I understand your frustration with the timing, uh, but I can say that we do have it in order now. I'll be glad to meet with you and take any medicine I need to take, but I was not involved with that timeline as Crystal or Chandler can tell you. I can tell you now we have it under control. I understand your skepticism. I'll be glad to meet with you and talk about anything you have to talk about. Well, sir, um, I want to I appreciate you did your, your due diligence. I appreciate your due diligence now. Uh, when did you say you took over this project? I'll have to go look and find. I mean, you said I think you, you said 2019. Is that correct? It was sometime in 2019. Yes. Okay, 2019. Uh, you took over the project, and in this time frame, it's pretty much from beginning to end again. I mean, it's like we started over completely, and we got this project uh, permit. Yes. In that time frame. We applied for this permit back in 2015 originally. That's going on five years. Okay, so those first three years, we have thrown away money. We have been, uh, well, it's cost us a lot of money uh, trucking out our waste and having to take down that mound that was grade was off and uh, was overfilled that your company was responsible to tell us that you know, if we're on grade, if we're not, you just told me if we're doing that. So, you know, you can see my skepticism, but I do appreciate you getting the job done the way it's supposed to have been done the first time. Thank you, I'm done. Um, sir, what did you say your name was again? This is Gayla Blazer. I'm in uh, the CLB in the second district and I have a couple of questions. It's, uh, Mark Cathy. Okay, that's what I had written down. I just wanted to make sure of that. Um, my question would be this. If, and I'm looking at, I don't know, Terry, if this is what you think you're looking at, giving this contract to them or us redoing it um, or whatever. What kind, and, and, and I understand that you weren't uh, involved in all those other situations and that kind of thing. And, and uh, from what I understand, looks like you've been on top of everything what you, when you came in the picture. But my question is this, 
what kind of guarantee can McGill and Associates give us, the county, if this situation happens again? And can we write that into that contract? Because, I mean, I don't want to see our county, you know, held up again because of somebody that either quits, gets fired, or just puts us on the back burner somewhere. Uh, of course we could, and we can guarantee you a schedule. And again, I, I'm sitting here telling you that, and, and I, I understand the questions, they're fair questions, but I've been doing this 25 years. Jeff Bishop, who's also listening on the line, he's been doing this 30 plus years. We got a hold of this project and once this once TDEC gave us the criteria, uh, we met them on site. We had this thing permitted in pretty quick order. Right. And I understand that. And I mean, you're you're that this from what I understand, when you got 2019, you, you have fairly moved that pace around and you're doing well with that. And I'm just I understand that. That's great. But I'm saying going forward. Uh, and I know that we can't go back and recruit any kind of losses that we've had. But my, my question was, I mean, and still is, what kind of guarantees can we have from this company that, you know, if, for instance, you, when they came in and said, well, I've got a better job, I'm leaving, and then we're put on the back burner from somebody else again. From no. this company, I want guarantees from them that this is not going to happen again. Written somewhere in that contract, whatever but some kind of guarantee that you know sure that's what i'm asking for that, that's fair that's reasonable we can definitely do that to whatever satisfaction that that you know that you would like to see the county would like to see but i can tell you that i am part owner of the company i've been involved with mcgill associates for 20 plus years and so i don't plan on going anywhere but I, you know plans change fair enough uh, but I, I don't see myself going anywhere. Okay. I, I mean, I understand that. And, and that's all well and good. And if you've been with this company for 20 some years, I just wonder who at that company is actually looking out for us. You know, I, and I think that's sort of a fair question. If this has happened and it seems like from what Mr. Clevenger says, and, and I don't know all the specifics and all that kind of stuff and, and where, you know, Evidently, it doesn't sound like that we're we're just put on a back burner somewhere, and I don't like that. Well, I, I understand uh, what you're saying, and I'm looking out for you, and I have since I've been involved with this project. And I I think Crystal and Chandler can tell you that, and, and I apologize. I don't have anything else to say. I don't know the specifics of that. We can go back and revisit it, and I will be glad, as you are comfortable with COVID and everything else, to come and, again, sit and, and talk to you about everything I know and can provide, but I, I can't right. speak what I do not know. What and, and why. I don't want you to, and, I, and I'm not asking you to. My whole thing is going forward. I want guarantees from your company if we, you know, that this is not going to happen again. And we have, if it does some kind of recourse, you know, from you all. Yeah. Um, I don't mind stepping in and saying that um, once we realized that Jake, the former employee there at McGill, was not doing the the the, the due diligence there um, for whatever reason um, that that happened, and we could not get um, the things we needed out of the Knoxville office, which is who we have used since uh, prior to me taking office. Um, I talked to uh, both Jeff and and uh, Mark as well as TDEC, and we had to stay course. There was no, let's start over. Let's find somebody else. Let's do something different. Um, so we took that to, to Mark and Jeff, um, in the Asheville office of McGill. And ever since then, they have been on top of it. Um, nothing was started over. Um, we continued on and with the suggestions that the state has made, from the inception of the, the start of this in 2016, um, they've asked for changes, changes were made. Yes, there was the delay there um, on, on that. And I'll give you the timeline from the inception to now. Um, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. Um, right. Good. Um, and I'm not either. I, 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 I'm I don't, I don't like, well, I've seen enough politics in the last two days where I ain't gonna do it here. Um, right. Ian's gonna revisit whatever Ian's want. I'll give you any information, 
but I mean, it is what it is and we are where we are and the permit has been approved. Um, thank you, Mark and, and Jeff for, for seeing that through. Sure. Well. I'm not revisiting that, Crystal. I just want you to know that. I just want, oh, you no. know, no, I just no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm county. not revisiting, I, I'm not revisiting anything or trying to pull any kind of political thing at all here, Madam Mayor. You sat here and said this was before you were king. Letter came to you in 2016. I said we okay. did. We go, yeah, it went in in 2015, but you were in charge when this happened. And as far as McGill and Associates, this man's been with them for 25 years and he is an owner. Now, he is just as culpable in this as anyone. Now, I understand he may not know the specifics, but it's his job to know these specifics. Okay. We have spent over a million dollars that we didn't have to because of this. I don't, I don't see any matters. outrage from anyone. I see. I don't see you complaining. I don't see anybody else complaining. The letters that were sent that told us that our landfill was about to be filled, we were informed that we were going to have to truck this stuff out back in 2017, three years ago. We were informed we were going to have to do that, yet we did nothing to move forward with getting that landfill permit. It went to the wayside for another two years. And no one wants to take responsibility for that. And it's okay that you sit there and say, well, it's I'm not beating a dead horse. That dead horse cost us a lot of money. You know, you're going to let this dead horse go. What's the next dead horse? And I don't, I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming anyone. I want answers and I want somebody to sit up and say, look, we made a mistake. That's all you got to do. I'm tired of this passing the buck on to somebody else and blaming somebody else and just trying to forget it and sweep it under the rug. We don't have the money to pay for this. And that's one big reason why. We are throwing money away. You all knew that we were going to be trucking this stuff out to a tune of 30,000 per month, 25 to 30,000 per month for two years. You knew this two years ago and you let it happen sit back and let it happen um i know that we can go forward and that's what we need to do is go forward with this um all i want to do is have uh you know something in place if this situation happens again that you know we have some recourses our county and uh, it seems like you all have done a, you've done good since 2019 you've got it on track and it's moving and I want to go forward with it. So that's what I was saying. I'm just wanting to try to protect the county going forward because it seems like, I mean, you all are still going to be in charge of monitoring our groundwater and all these other things that you're going to provide. And uh, I, I just want to know that that's what's going to happen. Not necessarily, Gaila. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if this proposal goes through, Mr. Clevenger, okay, that's what I'm saying. I want to go forward, uh, protect the county if there's something that comes up, and and have something in place for that, and go forward. Yeah, like I said, if, if anything, any contract provisions that the county would want moving forward with McGill, by all means, we will get those to 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 meet that to, that requirement. And, okay. and, and Crystal, if you don't care, I would, I mean, I would love to, to have your input. What, where do you think that failure was? Where can we maybe write into that contract and our county attorney to look at a contract if that's where we're going, okay? Yeah, I'll get you all the information so you can see where uh, where things broke down. Okay, that's fine. And I mean, if somebody I mean, just needs somebody to blame, I got thick skin and big shoulders, yeah. throw it on here. I'm um, not blaming anybody, Chris. I'm that. just saying. I, I I'm just that. saying. I'm, I'm going just... forward. Going forward. I want it to be right. Going forward. I want the county. You know, whoever this proposal goes to, whatever. Uh, I want it. You know, some kind of protections in for our county for for that kind of thing. So that's all I'm saying. We I'll got to protect our the... county and that kind of stuff. I'll get you the previous contracts. Um, okay. We know that there's been changes in, in the Knoxville office. I can right. the things that they've been doing as far as well monitoring um, um, for as long as they've been doing it. Um, 
the that's fine. I mean, you know, I just wanted to sort of look at that uh, before we sign any kind of contracts with anybody. You know, I just want to make sure and have our, our county attorney look over it that, you know, our county is going to be protected going forward from this. And we have some, some kind of recourse uh, to the company. If you fail, uh, there's an indemnification in here from what I've read, uh, you know, against like the county, if we fail to do something different, things like that. But I don't really see anything that's really going to cover us the way I want us to be covered. So that's what I'm looking at. I'd like to step, uh, I'd like to step in here for just a second. This is Tony from the Solid Waste Board. Uh, I agree with Miss Blazer 100%. Everything she said as far as getting something in the contract. I uh, also uh, agree with Mr. Clevenger on having spent money that didn't need to be spent or whatever. But uh, let's get past all this. Blame doesn't matter. Blame's not going to fix anything. We don't care about blame. Let's get to what we need to do to fix it and not let it happen again. I agree completely with that, Tony. And, you know, we do need to move forward. My whole thing is, you know, I've been in business for 28 years, a uh, private business. If this had happened to me, I'd had a, a merchant or a, a supplier that had done me this way, I wouldn't be doing business with them again, regardless. I'm not saying that we, we I think we need a third party review and all this. The Gill Associates may be the best choice right now. They do seem like they have their feces accumulated now. And, uh, Maybe we can move forward with them. I don't know. I want another set of eyes on this. That's what I will recommend. And I don't know how you all feel about it. I think this should be going out to bid anyway. We should be. We should have other people looking at it and giving us their opinion. Okay. That the contract is for, I believe it is reasonable. I think you cut out, Jillian. You hear me now? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay, now. Yeah, I got you back. I said that I agree with Forrest that for the amount of money that this contract will be for, that it is really out for bid. Lost you again there. She said she agreed, Terry. She said she agreed, Terry, for the amount of the contract, it would be reasonable to put it out for deal. Okay. Okay. Is there any other comments from any of the commissioners, the mayor, the board? Any questions you want to ask while you got them on, on the phone? Yes, this is David Verdal, sixth uh sixth uh commissioner from the sixth district. Uh, post two. My, I, my only question is, following up on what Forrest has said, if if we're not the one responsible for this and somebody else is, then why are we the ones paying out all the money? Why did we pay out all the money? Why shouldn't somebody else be responsible for this money we've paid out? That's all I've got. Does anybody want to Comment on the David's question there. I like to say that's an excellent this, question. This it would be interesting to know if McGill and Associates were bonded and insured, if there was any kind of insurance or uh, something to fall back on, because we have taken a loss due to uh, basically what boils down to malpractice, uh, malthesis, if you want to call it, because the job was not completed and we are paying a penalty every month for it. And that's due to an employee, actually, at McGill, right? Well, I don't, I do not know the sequence of events that happened. Okay. And I think Crystal can tell you that. I, I did not go to Cock County until 2019. 
Right, I understand that. And so um, I, I'm not trying to dodge anything, and I, I really am. I'm not. I, I just don't know anything to speak of it. I know right. that I took this project and we permitted it. We have you a permit. And again, the state said this was great. This is the one of the best submittals we've ever had. That's that. I'm not saying that to try to avoid anything other than to tell you that that's where we are now. And that regardless of how you move forward, I can tell you now as someone who's done this for a long time, that yes, you, you need to move forward for this next construction season with someone, McGill Associates or otherwise. And I can tell you that, and you know, you know that needs to happen because yes, of the situation you're in now with you need another solution for your class three waste. And so I urge you to do that. And the other, the other is, is that we provided you a proposal as I came to the Solid Waste Board on uh, December 3rd. And what uh, my recommendation was is that we evaluate all of your revenue and all of your costs associated with class three waste. And we compare operating the landfill versus potentially building a transfer station or using a private hauler to, to, use your, to transfer your waste. So that's just because I didn't see that the data was there to make that decision. So that was my recommendation based on the time I've been involved with the county. And, you know, also uh, from my conversations with the state, the state, you know, they can't get into your business, but they have some concerns about how we're going to move forward. And of course, that's ever since I've came to Cock County, we've been trying to get this resolved. We have it resolved. I know I have great relationship with TDEC, all the players in TDEC. That's all I can speak of today. Uh, again, I encourage you to move forward somehow. As far as uh, taking bids on professional services, we cannot provide competitive bids on professional services in North Carolina. And we just, we're not allowed to do that. Uh, you, now, by all means, you send out a request for qualifications you, you have people submit on qualifications and then you select the most qualified consultant of which you ask for a contract from. That's what I would recommend to you, regardless of whether that's Miguel Associates or not. Mark, I wasn't at the meeting on December 3rd. Can you kind of just give a brief overview of your proposal? Yeah, well, I actually didn't have a proposal on that night. What I had on that night was we discussed the landfill development. And what we discussed was basically that the permit had been issued and we talked about our cost estimates relative to phase one development and then phase two development. And I sent a, a summary email on December 22nd to the Solid Waste Board, of which I can send to everyone on this list or someone on the Saw Waste Board can share it. I'll be glad to if I get all the contacts. And which basically talks about everything that we discussed on that night. Um, and then as far as a proposal, what we recommended was that you need an evaluation of how every component of your solid waste program, uh, you know, as far as the financial, so that you would understand that it costs this much to do to dispose of your class three waste. It takes this so much to dispose of your class one waste. And I understand you got convenience centers. I understand you have different county facilities, but all of that, does it make more sense to do a transfer station or do the landfill or do a combination thereof? And I know you're uh, reviewing proposals for hauling and those things. I just simply propose that the county would have the information uh, to make those decisions. And that's what I discussed as far as an option one being for class three only option two being for the full solid waste program. And that's what we discussed on December 3rd, but anybody from the solid waste board remembers it different, please, please correct me. What was the option two, did you say? You said the class uh, three landfill was option one, right? And yeah. option two was what, sir? It, look at the entire program. Look at the MSW, all your costs okay. and revenues associated with all aspects of your solid waste program from okay. collection to disposal 
to all the options, whether it be on the transfer station, haul it yourself, use, use a private hauler, whichever would be the most cost effective on a per tonnage basis for the county is what uh, we discussed. Okay, all right. I'm sorry, it just breaks early and just, I didn't get all that. Just to be clear in case, uh, in case someone didn't know, the uh, first, the first proposal there of things to do was uh, on the high side going to cost around 20 grand. So it could be less, but right around 20,000. And the full survey, if I'm not mistaken, could be as high as $60,000 just for, so everybody knows what's going on. Uh, actually, Tony, what we, what I sent on December 22nd was a range of 15 to 20 to look at the class three and a range of 50 to 80 to look at the full program. Thank you for correcting me because I, I couldn't hear real good on that last uh, meeting and I was under the impression it was around 60, but 50 to 80, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Mark, if you don't care to send that to, um, I guess everybody on the, well, at least the commissioner, well, if you don't care to send that to me and I'll get it to all the commissioners um, that, e that copy of that email. Sure, I'll send you the December 22nd email, which was sent to the Solid Waste Board members. And I'll also send you the proposal. I appreciate that very much. Okay. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? My phone has went in and out, but I'm getting a lot of it. Uh, does any of the commissioners, anybody from the board, the mayor, or anybody have any questions? I do appreciate uh, Mark. He came to the December of the meeting, and he was very informative. He's come back with these proposals. I appreciate his efforts. I wasn't involved in none of this previous stuff, so I'm not a – I just know what I've heard and seen. But we need to move forward. We've got to do something. We're at the point when we can do things now. I appreciate everybody's efforts. That includes the mayor, McGill, anybody that had anything to do with it, Solid Waste Board, anything that, uh, that's been accomplished. And we're like I said, we're getting to the point now that something can be done, and I want us to work together, whether it be the Solid Waste Board, the commissioners, the mayor, everybody involved and move forward to this project because it's a very expensive thing and we've lost a lot of money and there's a lot of work to be done so does anybody else have any comments i'll just say really quickly that um if y'all are wanting to put this out for bid um as we're talking about money the longer you know we've been we we're still discussing and things like that um so that's going to continue um it's just, it's just a continuing until something gets done, whether it's this proposal, that proposal, whatever. So um, you'll want to work with Justin you'll, to get your, your bids out. You'll have to decide, you know, what you're looking for. If you're, if you're going to take Mark's advice and do um, an RFQ and get qualifications, um, that's what we did when we were looking for, for architects and engineers for the jail. Um, if you do RFQs, um, you'll want to work those up. What, what you're looking for and then work with uh, Justin, the purchase agent, get those put out um, and get your timeline together on that. Um, the other stuff that, that I wanted I'll get for you all as far as the current, current contract and things like that for your all's review, the one that, that's in there now, um, I'll go ahead and send it to the county attorney to look over, letting her know that it definitely may change depending on what, what the Solid Waste Board decides to do. This is Chandler. I wanted to say since Mark came on that he has turned his ship around. He's got us going in the right direction. We have been to meetings at T Day from Knoxville. He stays in contact with me. And if you stay in contact, you don't have the, the mistakes you had if you don't communicate. He communicates very well, and I'm pleased with what he has done at this point. I'll second that. Um, I don't think anyone would would say that I, I was not um, frustrated and disappointed in Jake. That's how Mark got on um, with any as, as they are the experts, you you trust them and there was trust there that might not have been warranted once once we realized that things weren't going exactly um, as we thought they would. Um, but since that was brought to Mark's attention, um, 
it, it was immediately addressed and has since had successful results. He's worked tirelessly on this project and he communicates with me weekly, every week. We're communicating to make sure we're still going down the right path. And that keeps you from making mistakes. Yeah, and Chandler and Crystal, uh, we appreciate those comments, and we have, but at the same time, not looking for any pats on the back. I'll tell you right now, the county needs to move forward with something, okay? And again, I, I know you all are very aware that there's been money, there's money spent being hauling out. And again, uh, I, I can't speak to what happened and why that project didn't move forward, and I don't know if it was uh, miscommunication between the drill associates and the state. I would have to go back just like Crystal and look at every piece of information. That was not my objective when I got a hold of this. Jeff and I permitted this project and it is now permitted. And I cannot stress this can't, it can, but it should not move, go on much longer. I will stress to you to do something to move forward. I think at this point that the best course of action is with McGill Associates. I know what we're dealing with now. I know TDEC. We've already gone down that path. We you need to move forward with phase one, but by all means, it's your right to do whatever you need to to select someone. And if you need to, to submit an RFQ for this work, I understand, and we will gladly respond to that. I would just encourage you to do it in a timely fashion. I'm, I'm on, this is David Verdon in the sixth district. I'm all for moving on. That's that's not thing. But somebody's somewhere is going to have to be held accountable for this money it's lost. We got to keep that in mind. We can do two things at once, I'm sure. So while we're moving ahead, we do need to find out if we have to pull an attorney in here, like the mayor's saying, and, and take care of this. We got to figure this thing out somehow, some way. Randy, have you got anything to add? Sorry, David. Uh, you know, anytime you're dealing with uh, committees, that type of thing, it's tough to do. And I appreciate, Mark, what you're saying, because it uh, helps me give a little more information as to what's happened. Uh, I'm 18 miles away over in Morristown uh, back 33 years ago, because that's the age of my oldest son. We were looking at 18 months that we had left in the landfill. And Patrick, you know, uh, we put in a bailing system and that landfill is still operating today. We combine things and all, uh, and that's been rather successful. You've had some of your waste go over there and other things. I think what, as I've listened as an old professional gray haired engineer, you've got two or three things that you need to be thinking about. Mark's got your class three operation permitted now whatever sins of the past, let's put behind you, okay? But as far as going forward, uh, there's some things, David, Forrest, that y'all talked to me about that, uh, you know, what are some of the options? Uh, you know, would you want Mark and me to kind of put our heads together and chat a little bit and explore some opportunities? I've worked with his company before. Uh, we could do that. There's different things you need to do, but Miss Ottinger's right and everybody's right. You don't want to lose time, but at the same time, you've got a clock and you've got the stewardship fiduciary responsibility for the county that's going to be affecting, especially if you go into a 10 year contract on something without exploring all the options and what's available to you. Your old footprint uh, is there. Uh, you know, there's no sense of reinventing the wheel, but it always takes makes a lot of sense sometimes to step back, kind of have a third set of eyes, look at where we are, what we're doing, and where you need to go. And then you may have the horses with Mark and his company to, to go forward. Cause I'm like I say, I'm, I'm a, a sole practitioner. I went into business for myself about 13 years ago, but I worked with other firms for over 37 years. So, you know, David, I don't know if I'm answering your question right there, but, uh, you know, if a neighbor in the neighboring county can come over and give you some old expertise to help you uh, kind of have a little comfort in where you're going, it sounds like Mark's kind of got things under control. I'm certainly available. Uh, and, you know, whatever. Uh, Forrest had talked to me back almost uh, six months ago, just asked me some ideas and that type of thing. So 
Varsity, I don't know if you want to jump back in and kind of talk about some of our discussion, but that's that's what I would propose, David. Is that you know if you all wanted to have some uh, some a little bit of an exchange, kind of a charrette, those type of things, we can do that too. Yeah, I, for what you know, uh, Randy, I think that's correct. I would be glad to participate anytime, virtually, in person. We'll make everyone comfortable. Be glad to sit down and talk about the the challenges and opportunities that the county has. And by all means, I'm always, uh, I got plenty of gray hair myself, but I'm always uh, willing to learn something and get another perspective from another gray hair. And so if we want to do that and do that in short order, I'd be glad to and, and, and talk about uh, a way to move forward. I'm, I'm available, whatever you would like. I'm good with what you're saying, Randy. Uh, I think it'd be good if you could come over and help us. I don't have a problem with it. I don't know if anybody else does. Um, any extra person could help us out would be great, I think, at this point. Well, at one time in my career, I had four landfills going on at one time, permitting BASF into a, which was a private landfill, into a class one, combining uh, Hammond County and Morristown, putting into Baylor, and doing some other evaluation. I've worked in East Ridge uh, down near Chattanooga to help them with uh, using a pit burner to take care of trash waste, that type of stuff, uh, compactors and other areas. So, I mean, if it's yeah. beneficial to the county, you know, and if it helps you all feel a lot more comfortable with Mark and their company going forward, and that can be beneficial to everybody, that's that's what I'd like to do is just make sure you don't have a problem with where you're going forward and that you've had some exploration. And I would, I would offer that, uh, again, we would be glad to uh, utilize Randy as part of this project because I do want the county to move forward. You need to move forward. And again, I, I can't answer it because I don't have all the data. Uh, I think some uh, some meetings with Heather and Chandler and Crystal and and others could probably produce that information to probably show us. I think what we would show us is that you need to move forward with phase one of your class three landfill. Uh, I don't know that to be the fact because I don't have the information, but I expect that that would be the case uh, if we looked at that uh, closely but I would welcome Randy's uh, input into that and welcome him to be part of that team if that would help. Uh, I hear what Randy's saying, he's a sole practitioner. I do have an office full of people here, but uh, I'm confident that if that could provide the confidence to the county and give us an avenue to move forward and get your landfill built, uh, I would welcome that wholeheartedly. <laughs> Well, I appreciate everybody uh, joining in on this and their comments, and I feel like it would be good that if everybody could work together, get their input, and move forward because the situation with the landfill has to go move forward, and it uh, seems like we're making some progress now, and I'd like to see the Solid Waste Board and commissioners and the mayor and, and all these companies that have been involved uh, with all their inputs. And I appreciate everything that everybody said and done tonight. I think it uh, it's very informative and there is some other questions that needs to be answered as some of them's asked. And Crystal said she would get that and different ones and we appreciate that. Is there anything else? Any of the commissioners, anybody on the board? Hey Terry, I got one thing real quick. Um, we focused yes, a is. lot on um, the, the C&D landfill. And we're going to do maybe do some consultations, maybe put RFQs moving down that line. But I don't want the county commission to lose sight of the proposal from uh, uh, Steve from GFL, which is nothing to do with the C&D, if you're going to keep it C&D. Um, but we've got that proposal for the compactors, various things, We um, with Parrotsville wanting a compactor we we can't lose sight of that 
as we're pushing this along because we're also pushing that one out as well. So simultaneously or if we need to switch focus and break these two up, I don't know what what your preference are, but you have two proposals, two different things, and both of them need your time and attention. Um, so I don't know how y'all want to to do those, but I don't know, you know, if you want to move forward on one or or I don't know what y'all want, but don't lose sight of that one as well. Um, because I know that they're they're needing some compactors and there's some things. Clay, you might speak on that as far as what Paris was at on what they want. Um, but just keep those in your mind too and don't lose sight of that one as we're focusing a lot on this one. I appreciate that, Crystal. Me? Do what, Jillian? I just want to make sure you could hear me. Um, so for that uh, GFL proposal, some of that does actually include the compactor for the landfill as one of the options um, instead of completely reopening the landfill. So they are uh, relevant to one another in some perspective. But like you said, it may be necessary for us to break that portion of the contract up to where we're just looking at compactors for convenience centers in one part. Steve, I'm sure that's possible, right? We could just look at the compactors right now for your plan. Yeah, the um, the compactor we proposed for the landfill for the CND material was just it was an alternate to the site with the household waste with, um, you know, the compactors that were going to go at the, originally it was 12 convenient sites, but we moved it down to 10 because of uh, Irish Cut and Center View or city, city Center not having a person there for the county, you'd have to hire somebody. So, um, yeah, the last proposal we gave on the household waste portion for the convenience centers was for the uh, 10 uh, convenience centers. Which did not, which that is separate from the landfill. That's separate from this whole. We just presented a compactor option for the landfill should the county want to go that route. That's, it, it was not tied into the other part of the bill. I think she's we, talking about the pre crusher, Steve. Yes, that's correct. That, that's, that's what we were, yeah, the pre crusher is, was a, in addition to if the county wanted to go in that direction, but the main bid. Uh, that we've been working on, that we've been, you know, getting the proposals together on has been for the uh, for the household waste at the new centers. And we have looked in the past, and the compactors are cheaper to operate than these front load dumpsters, correct, Steve? That is correct. So it, it is in the bet. Now the board can do what they feel is best, but it looks like it might be better to try to work the county towards having compactors and less front load dumpsters. I will also just chime in here and say, I do know that, um, and again, just from what I, I think what even precipitated this initial proposal that got everything all rolling does involve that compactor issue at Parrotsville. As you were talking about, because the um, Ruiton Club, which owns the the property that we are using, um, they want compactors there, and they're willing to give some, you know, extra land in order to make that work out, et cetera. And they've been waiting on that for probably maybe eighteen months or longer to try to, you know, get something done about that. That whenever they first initially, you know, approached the county, the commission about that, and, and we're not necessarily trying to to. And I'm not strong arming nor am I speaking for the Ruiton Club, but I mean, we in the Parrotsville community, or at least from that, there is no other viable place for it to go. That, we've tried that for a long, long time. And so we do not want to have a situation where the Ruiton Club takes that away from us. Now, I'm not saying that they would, would do that. However, if you were involved with an organization and you'd asked for something two years ago or 18 months ago and nothing had been seemingly moved forward and we were no closer today than we were then, you could see where there would be some frustration on their part. I'm not saying that that's what they're going to do. I just do think that that is an issue that um, we need to be aware of. And I know that these two are related. As Jillian said, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you made it, you brought up a good point. 
but if we do not look at this proposal and start thinking about this from a county standpoint, um, we could lose. We run the we run the risk. I think for every month or you know six months that this gets put off, we run the risk of losing. And that is that is. I mean, as I think the people from GFL will tell you, that's one of the busiest places for whatever reason. And um, if it doesn't go there, I don't. I mean, I think you're you're. There's a lot of bad things that can happen there. I mean, and again, I, I'm not going to put Gail on the spot, but I think she would agree with me. We can't not have a dump in that in that area. That's already a big big get place anyway and there's just nowhere else to put one over there or there hasn't seemed to be one yet and we have looked actually i mean yeah people yeah I, I know been, been, we've looked and we've asked and we've asked property owners yeah. and it, yeah there's no there's not another place so that is that is an issue not to um not to also not say that like those issues that were brought up with you i mean like as they are connected we just as much as we can we need to be able to continue moving forward with that piece of it as well well some of the written members from Partsville had talked with us and uh, I agree with Clay and Gatlin and them. they're very interested in getting their compactors along with the other centers it's where it's feasible and they've been super nice they've been very patient it is something that we need to all kind of work towards getting these centers with compactors that should be one of our goals. And like Crystal said, that shouldn't be something that we set aside. So, you know, during this process, whoever is on the board or whoever is a CLB, whatever it might be, all the people involved, it's, it's things that I think that we could accomplish working, I'm going to say two projects at once, but not neglect one for the other. And I think it would be good. The compactors is very needed. It can save us some money. So, is there anybody else with any other comments or questions? Uh, Terry, if you don't mind, this is uh, Travis Hitchcock with GFL. Um, just to add a couple other comments in addition to, you know, Steve's comments earlier. Um, yes, the pre-crusher option that we provided you was sort of prompted by the fact that the open top hauling, the non-compaction of your CND waste was ongoing for quite some time. Essentially what motivated us to provide you that solution is we know how expensive it is to you know develop and manage a landfill and based off the numbers that we were running on your daily tonnage it really made sense to probably suggest that you might not want to get into the landfill design and construction we can provide you a 10-year cost of like 1.5 million where we understand that you're looking at 1.5, potentially $2 million for just constructing your landfill. So that's part of what prompted that proposal. It is completely separate. And that's why we brought that to the table, not pushing the, the, you know, the issue on that. It's simply up for you all to decide. Okay, we appreciate these comments from Travis. Uh, is there anybody else got any input on or comments? <laughs> Forrest, David, Clay, Gala, Mayor. I would like to say something there. Uh, uh, I don't know if Mr. Clevenger's still on here or not, but uh, two things. One is, uh, you know, we talked about having extra eyes on this, and I, I have no problem with this fellow Randy coming out. If he's got some good information, you know, to help us out. Uh, that's great. Uh, more information we got, the better we can uh, make a decision, informed decision. Um, I am, uh, I've only been on this board for a little less than a year, uh, and uh, I'm already sick of kicking the can down the road. Uh, we need to, we need to get into this, and we do have other eyes on this because since they've created this board there's three sets of eyes on here that are trying their best to figure out what would be the best to do for the county the compactors are definitely a good idea i worked in waste for a long time and uh hauling waste and all that and uh i think that's going to be our definitely going to be our our next thing we've got to do and uh, but all this is going to end up being wrapped up with each other the two things are going to be wrapped up with each other but we need to to uh, get the information we got to have and make a decision. We can't just keep kicking it down the road, down the road and hoping it'll fix itself. It's not going to. 
Tony, I'm just going to say, uh, Terry, I just want to say that I second Tony because in government and all this, things move at a snail's pace. Um, you need to get your decks in a row or, or you know, as a county and, and go forward. Have your meetings with whoever. Set them up, you know, in the next week or whatever. But it, we need to be on top of this and keep moving with it. Appreciate that from Gayla. As Tony said, you know, we're a new board and we had to learn a lot of things. I feel like it, we've accomplished a lot and we've investigated a lot of things. And that's what the Solid Waste Board was set up to do. And the mayor has been wonderful working with us and helping out. And of course, Chandler didn't have no office and she's helped him a lot. And Chandler's been excellent to work with. And uh, there is a lot of things that's coming to a head right now. And I agree that, you know, hopefully we can get some things moving forward shortly. And I appreciate everybody's attitude tonight. They've worked good together. Everybody's just commented where they're at and what they, their questions, what they kind of wanted. And that's what a good meeting is all about. This virtual meeting is new to me, but I appreciate everybody. And so is there any other questions before? We... I don't have a question, but I do just want to let everybody know that um, the next two meetings will be on the first Thursday of February and March. Both the dates are going to be the 4th at 6 p.m. Hey, Terry, this is Mark Cathy. I would like to say the, the whole idea of our proposal that you, that I sent on December 31st that was mentioned was to evaluate the class three money. So that, that might, might I suggest that that would be where we might get with Randy and uh, with his oversight, he obviously has trust in many, many of the board members. And I understand and appreciate that. But we would actually give the solid waste board and the CLB the information to know what it's going to cost for a ton of class three waste. If you build a landfill, phase one is uh, 6.7 years. Uh, capacity. Uh, phase two will give you a, another uh, nine years of capacity. So you're comparing 15.7 years of landfill capacity. And the fact that you have some overfill there now that would not have to be hauled off, there is a cost to that, to what Mr. Hitchcock provided. It may very well be that Mr. Hitchcock, his proposal may be best. And that's the reason you have this in front of you, because with my conversations with uh, TDEC, uh, you know, they they suggested that, you know, is this what the county needs to do to build the landfill? And we didn't make that decision, is my understanding, that we were asked to do a permit on that. So what I'm saying now is, as of, since I've been involved, I've not seen the data that the county has to make that decision. You have a private contractor in GFL offering you. I understand that, and it very well may be your best option. I'm simply trying to provide what I've learned in 25 years and Jeff's learned in 30 years and we've done for numerous clients is to evaluate all your costs and all your revenues and explain to you what your cost per ton would be for these options over a 15.7 year capacity compared to your landfill, compared to a transfer station, compared to a private haul or turnkey operation. Thank you, Mark. I just want to highlight to the CLB what he has said that at maximum, pretty much the landfill plan that we have is about 15 years. So no matter what, we will have to visit this in about 15 years if that's what we go with. And that's not- That is correct. So that's why the study seemed to be so important and necessary because we need to get a long-term vision for what our solid waste uh, removal and uh, management is going to be for further down the road than 15 years. We don't have this work. Did we lose her? Julian, I think what you said and, and echo, that's what's so important about thinking about all the different options uh, 
looking at everything uh, to be able to take the information you've got, compare it, look at all the different things. It doesn't hurt just to have somebody come in and, and have another look at it. And you're right, because what you're going to do sets in motion the next five years, 10 years, 15 years. What's your bond? You know, what have you got to do? Where are you going to be 30 years from now? Uh, as long as there's people, there's one thing for sure going to happen. There's going to be waste produced, how you deal with the waste, and how you deal with it the most economically for the benefit of the citizens of Cock County. And when you've got uh, the resources that you've got that are limited somewhat because of the National Park and other things that kind of you've got a smaller base to get things off of. So those were part of the evaluation process that you need to go through. And uh, I, I think that all these things are important as you put that final plan together. And it's not permanent. It may have to change and alter too also. Is there any other comments? I think it's going in now. Are you there? Yeah, um, I did want to thank. I know um, we've got some people here from CTAS as well. Um, Kim is on here, and I want to thank her because I know she's she's um, given a lot of information to me and to some of the commissioners. Um, and, and I know she's listening in now, and I, I want to thank her for, for all that and her continued support and assistance as we move forward in whatever direction we go in. Uh, Mayor, thank you. I really appreciate that comment. I have been listening, and um, I'll, I'll like to reach maybe back out to you and uh, the commission uh, sometime uh, tomorrow, if that's possible. Yes, thank you. Okay. Is anybody else? There's going to be you have to a lot of cooperation between everybody because it's getting very expensive, and the solid waste board and the commission is going to have to find some funding and things. And everybody tonight, like I said, I really appreciate y'all's attitude and your comments, and everybody trying to help one another. That's what it's going to take to move our county forward. And I do appreciate it. So is, before we move into any other new business, is uh, any other comments anybody would like to make? Uh, just real quick, because I know you all are a new board. Um, but if you all are looking at, even even though you're, you're your or your board, you still have to follow all the county procedures. So, like, if you do bids and you know it's going to be over twenty five thousand dollars, you can't get quotes. You have to do sealed bids, which we kind of already got a quote. So, um, we're going to have to figure out how we how we go on from here. Um, so, I, I would I need to, to make sure that you maybe get with me or Heather so you know the the bid procedures. Um, and how that works um, and what we need to do going forward, whether you go RFQs or whatever, um, because it's a little skewed now. So we got to pull that back together. But anything over 25,000 has to be sealed bid. So we can't just go asking people now, whether it's this company or that company, um, how much they will do this for or whatever, because we're in sealed bid territory. Um, and, and again, we're a little skewed. Um, not that not that we've done anything wrong or, or anything's bad about it, and um, we just got to pull that back and, and redo some things. Well, I think if, if I remember correctly, when Tony and Julie and I and uh, when they spoke to us and these figures came up, I had asked Heather. You know, like I said, we're new, not making any excuses. It's just a new board, and my understanding was that anything around twenty five thousand, and you've been very helpful with us and. Uh, Whoever is on the board or the CLB or whatever, uh, you know, we're going to have to work together because Chandler's not even had an office with a computer. And uh, so it's good that we can all work together and you all understand it. So I really appreciate it. 
Her and no worries at all because this particular where we're at right now, it falls under professional services, so you don't even have to bid it out. But now that we're looking at going the, the, that route, um, we we got to put that out for bid if that's what we're going to do. We can't call around and get quotes um, or get proposals from anybody else without doing it in in a exact spec sealed bid form. So yeah, you you all didn't do anything wrong by getting this proposal because it's it's considered professional services. So um, it, there's no problems with it. We just got to make sure that if we're going in this route now. We, we stay that route and we do it through the proper procedure. So no worries on anything. I, I do, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I do want to point out to everyone that the proposal we have to you now is hourly to a maximum. We give you an upset maximum because we, we have no idea how much time it would take us to find the data relative to the class three waste. So we could, that uh, our, our efforts could be one meeting, uh, crank the spreadsheet and come back for more meeting. Meet with Andy, meet with uh, you know the Salt Waste Board, meet with the CLB, whatever it needs to be. We've given you an hourly contract with a maximum upset. It's not twenty thousand dollars. Okay, I just want everybody to understand that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, speaking to um, the fact that we are looking at several different costs and a timeline, um, the budget process will start here pretty soon. And um, we kind of, not to put a pressure on anybody, but if this is something we want to look at for next budget, we kind of need to know what direction we're going so we know how to budget or if there is debt that needs to be taken out. And that includes the compactors as well as um, if you want to budget for the study next year or any of this. So just kind of be thinking about that in the back of your mind as well. To piggyback on Thank that, you. to piggyback on that, um, if you all, if this end up does end up going past the budget year, factor in the cost associated with hauling it out. When, when you all get to, to the point of discussing your budgets and things like that. Either way it goes. If you're going to act before the budget, we got to get those costs in. If the timeline pushes it back to where you don't know exactly what, what route you're going to take um, prior to the budget, then you need to factor in the cost to haul. Okay. Now, like I said, we're near this. Would this be something of course, the solid waste board and the CLB is having to work together with everybody else, the mayor's house, everybody included. It, is this the proper way? Like, it would go to the solid waste board, and then it would go to the CLB to work in the budget. I know Heather's listening. Or would Chandler present that in his budget? Any agreements that, um, for example, if we were to go with the compactors that GFL is proposing, and that's over 10 years, and that's an agreement that involves money that would spread over a, more than one budget year, um, that has to go before CLB. So, yes, you all would see that in committee, send it on with a recommendation to CLB that says, yes, we want to do these compactors, um, and then the CLB will approve that, and then from there, we'll work that into the budget. And uh, Terry, Jillian, Tony, I don't care to come to your meetings and help you all through a budget. If y'all wanna look at the budget, just let me know which meeting you all want me to come to. Um, and I'll, I'll be glad to look at some of that with you. Well, and Heather, if you don't mind me chiming in, uh, for example, Claiborne County was going through a lot of evaluation back in late 80s, early 90s, they had a solid waste board that they created, and then they had to go to the county for the funds to you know, make sure it followed through. And so I think that probably with the solid waste board, think about the studies and the other thing, that they have a budget, the operating budget, kind of proposal study phase budget, but then at the same time, that gives the county overall, in terms of the commissioners looking at funding, there's a game plan of knowing what what's going to happen and where and why that's evaluated versus the other thing. So, again, that's uh, 
you know, having listened to you all for the first time tonight, I hear a lot of tributaries of the river starting to come together and it looks like you're headed in the right direction. I think that's important because this is not a simple issue. You're not a small county. You've got, you know, you've got to think about the cost of open ways versus consolidated ways getting to one central point, what happens with it and where it goes. And I think that's part of where, as I've heard what you said tonight, and I appreciate Forrest getting me invited in here, I do think that you're headed in the right direction. I just think that, you know, we just need to kind of make sure we're all laying our cards on the table, lay, leaving egos checked at the door, and move forward. Because that's what's going to be best for Scott County. Appreciate those comments. Somebody else. Heather, do you have a suggested timeline for when would be optimal for you to speak with us about this budget um i am actually working on budget packets now i plan to give those out to the departments um the elected officials and department heads first of february first maybe not the first day of february because uh, i'm not sure if what day that actually is through the week but around the first of february i'll hand that out and then um i usually give everybody about a month month and a half to get that back to me so that I can then prepare for the April uh, budget committee meeting. So that's usually when we really start budget committee talking about the whole budget. So I could come meet. I can come meet with you all in February if you want me to, or even the first Mar meeting in March. It sounds like March might be a healthy time because you will already have your side of things done by then, and everybody will have a chance to take a look at it. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'll give that out to Chandler um, and I'll try to get it to him before y'all's meeting so he could give you all uh, a copy of what I give to him and you all can look at it and then I'll come in in March and speak with all three of you. Well, you, all three of you and Chandler. Just keep in mind, like uh, Heather said, that they start the budgets in April. So kind of got to make sure we got our ducks in a row, everybody involved, whoever it might be. And Randy, uh, if uh, if we decide, you know, we'd like to have you come by and, and uh, you know, just talk with us or something at one of these meetings, uh, you, uh, who has your contact information? Well, Forrest has got my information. Uh, so okay. just, just contact Forrest and I'll be happy to come over. It takes me all about 25 minutes to get over your way. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you uh, talking with us. Well, if you don't mind, uh, I'll step in here. Uh, since Heather's going to be and the mayor's going to be getting these packets together, if you would get that information, they have all uh, the commissioners and the board's emails. That would be good to include that in that. Terry, what do you want me to include? What what I was saying, you know, the mayor was talking about, uh, you know, and uh, you all, uh, I was just making a suggestion. It might be easier for Randy, uh, since you all have everybody's email, if he would get with you, and of course, I know he said Forrest had it, uh, if you could just put that in the emails and he would have the email addresses when he sent them out. If you think it would be convenient, I was just making a suggestion. Yeah, so you're talking about the mayor's putting together some information for the commission and and go ahead and send Randy's information with that. Is that what you're talking about, Terry? Yeah, I just thought okay. that was just a suggestion that I thought since it, this is his first conversation with us and he don't ever have everybody's email, I thought that might be an easy route to go. Uh, yeah, I can I can send Randy's information out to all the commission if um, if he doesn't mind me doing that. I believe I have Randy's email. I know I know Randy through uh, Rotary in Morristown, so <laughs> uh, so I can get everybody that information. Well, I I don't want to complicate, it, but I just thought it might make it more convenient. I, I can send know. it. Randy, if you're okay with me sharing your email address, I can send it out tonight or in the morning. Sure, sure, Heather, that's not a problem. Okay. Okay, I, like, I want to change okay. gears for a second. Um, in the last meeting, Terry, you made a motion for us to select a temporary secretary if we need it 
for next month. Did you find somebody to that just in case I'm not able to attend if I'm like in labor that day? <laughs> to be honest, I hadn't because I was, uh, if you noticed, I asked you how you wanted to handle it because I didn't know if you needed some time off being pregnant or with the baby or whatever, because you've been an excellent secretary and uh, we want to work with you. So I was kind of waiting on to get your views with. I'm happy to participate unless I'm like physically unable, but as long as it's, you know, a few days before or a few days after, I should be just fine. But if it is uh, the day, it's going to be the day. <laughs> well, right. Definitely. Oh, uh, I tell you what we do. Uh, of course, you know the terms is expiring and changing over, and the solid waste board and different things. But with your all's permission, uh, I'll get you a backup plan. I'll get with Heather or the mayor or, or Tony or somebody, and we'll work and have your standby, and I'll make sure that you're aware of it. Would that be okay with you? That sounds good. Okay. Hey, hey Terry. Um, yes. If you need um, someone from from our office, um, if it does fall on a day that Jillian's out, um, just let us know, and and we'll I'll send we'll have someone uh, take your your minutes and things that day or those days. Well, maybe. In order to take care of Jillian, and I know a lot of your staff works with the secretaries. I don't have a problem, and I think it would be nice, and I appreciate your offering. If we have a standby, because, you know, anything can happen, and she can go into labor, you know, might need some time out. Uh, if that's agreeable with the board and everybody, would that be okay to just let the mayor, uh, and if she has to call me or whoever's, Tony or whoever, and uh, have somebody, in other words, in place for whatever comes up, is that, a, is that agreeable with you, Tony and Jillian? Yeah, it's absolutely fine with me. Okay. We'll work it out with the mayor and them, and uh, we appreciate it. And uh, appreciate everybody helping us, because like I've told you from the very beginning, we're new, we're learning, everybody. And I appreciate the meeting tonight. Everybody seemed like it. we've moved forward and accomplishing some things, and whoever it might be. You've got the Solid Waste Board, the mayor, and the CLV, and all these companies involved. And this is a little bit different with Zoom meetings. But it seemed like we're moving forward, and, and I do appreciate it. I'd like to say one other thing, too, and I don't want to drag this out, but just to, to let things be known, I appreciate all the people that showed up, all my uh, colleagues here on the uh, Solid Waste Board, people that uh, offered information and things. But I also want to make sure and uh, say thank you to the mayor herself, as well as her office, who has been a tremendous help to me uh i've never served in a position like this before and i want to do the best and the right what thing that i can possibly do for our county and they have just been instrumental in, in all directing me in the way i need to go and doing things right and helping us on this board i want to say thank you to them appreciate you all very much y'all are always welcome um, we'll do anything we can for you um that, that's what it's about working together and moving forward and and getting things done appreciate these comments anybody else can i bring up something on the compactors mm -hmm. the compactors are something we desperately need that's for sure and um i you know if all we have is a 10-year or a five-year proposal I'd like something to be in that proposal to protect the county if that garbage is not picked up in a timely manner. Because I'm the one that catches the 25 phone calls a day, even from elected officials wanting to know why it's not being picked up. So, like Gayla wanted something in there to protect us on the McGill's deal, I'd like something to protect us on the, on the compactor deal. Absolutely. Is this, is this Chandler? It is. Okay. My phone was going in and out. I appreciate that, Chandler. Because I get calls and complaints from people, and I know I know that we're not GFO's only customer. They are busy, busy, and they can't come in a moment's notice. But we we've had to close down some centers, you know, lately, and it's it's, it's hard. And I understand it. It's not easy, but we need some kind of protection if we're going to have to sign a, a multi-year deal. 
I appreciate that. Uh, I really didn't know Chandler until we got involved in the solid waste board. I had met him at AC. He has been wonderful to work with. He's been very informative. He's you couldn't ask anybody better to work with. And I, I understand he's been there, I think, 15 years or whatever. And he's always been super nice and Johnny on the spot. And and I appreciate his efforts. And we, even as a CLB and on the solid waste board or whatever it might be, you have a good employee there. And I do appreciate his efforts. He takes his job very seriously. Did my phone can go I, off there? Can, can I reiterate something? Uh, yes, sir. Have, I mentioned this, this in the last. Well, I mentioned this in the last one of the last meetings we had. Uh, the new the if when we get the new uh, the new compactors, they will have sensors on them, and for the ones who especially are going to have two in them, there should be no reason that we should ever have to close the center down if those two compactors are worked in the correct way. Does that make sense? It makes sense as long as it works correct. Exactly. Yes. As long as we're, you know, doing them the way we need to be doing, there should be no issue at all. Um, and, and all of them will have sensors will go straight back to GFL. If you don't have to get out there on the side and smack it. <laughs> yeah, well, that, uh, yeah, we might have to do that once or twice. But... Oh, Lord. But we just, I we think everybody is... is I think we're all in full agreement that we need compactors and we need them. We needed them yesterday, but hopefully we're on track to getting some because it will save the county money and it is so much, it is very convenient. Oh, absolutely. Right. It's the cheapest way to go and most convenient way to go. And I just wanted the county to have some protections, you know, because if we had to go a 10 or a five year deal, that's a, that's a big contract. I just wanted to make sure there was no loose ends, you know, and, if we could keep it up and we never have to close the center down for because we were full. Well, that's a good steward at watching out for the county. Yes. Hey, uh, one more thing. This is Mark Kathy again. Um, uh, I do want to point out that the permit is good for 12 months. Uh, so you have to start construction of the landfill expansion of class three landfill expansion within 12 months that would be december 3rd so there's plenty of time there but at the same time it's it's not infinity so i want everybody to understand that and of course as i said before whatever you're going to do with your class three waste i recommend that you move forward in uh in short order and make sure that you don't miss the construction season if that's what you're going to do uh but you so if you're going to evaluate that and determine whether you want to go private hall or or build the landfill i do recommend that you Move on that in, in pretty short order. If you wait to the month of December and November, you can't do nothing. It's too wet, too messy. Am I correct, though? If we're already in construction and it runs through December, you're still within the guidelines of completing with your project, correct? As long as you're already in the procedure. Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. Chandler, anybody? Is anybody else? At some point in time, I, I know everybody realizes that the old landfill has to be closed out. You know, you've got to have a plan in action for the new one, and at some point in time, it has to be closed out. And that's going to be kind of an expensive project. Yeah, they, they still some more waste out that has to be removed, but... TDEC let us leave it in place because we had done such a good job of removing. And they said we could just move it into our new section to stop. And so we didn't have to pay 60 grand to get it removed. So they said they knew it was very expensive. Very expensive. Okay, is there any other comments or anything? I'd just like to thank the mayor and the, their office for pulling this meeting together. I'll make a motion to dismiss. Okay. Uh, but I know I, I have a 
you have a motion on the floor, but I want to make sure that there's no new business that you're Tony before we dismiss. Because my phone is apparently cutting in and out, and I'm, I heard the part about a motion, and I don't mean to be rude or cut you off, but I want to make sure everybody's included. Uh, did did you or Tony have anything else, or anybody, as far as that goes in the new business, the mayor yeah. or anybody? I have none. Thank you, though, for, for checking. Okay. Like I said, this is a little bit awkward for me. I'm at the store pulling off the, their system up here. And uh, I do really feel like that we've accomplished a lot tonight, and I appreciate everybody's attitude working together and all the proposals that's been presented. And uh, just everybody that's involved, I want to say thank you, and I appreciate it. And I'll recognize Julian's motion uh, to adjourn. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. And we'll consider this motion. Uh, we'll uh, a meeting adjourned. And thank you again for everybody involved and everybody participated. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.